Today on The Grid, it is our monthly blind photo critique day where we crush the hopes and dreams of photographers all over the world. And let me tell you, we're going to be crushing some today in a big way. Big surprise, Eric Kuna is back from his gallivantation once again. Uh, but we've got a great show for you today. we got some great giveaways for someone who's watching the show live. It is going to be, despite the fact of some harsh image critiques, a fun, fun day on the grid. And it all starts in just, I don't know, 23.2 seconds. Let's go. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Bid. Of The Grid. <laughs> of The Bid. Of The Bid. Hey, Bid. Of The Grid. Look who's here. Look, remember this guy? Yeah. Do you remember him? <laughs> He's back. I'm back. The guy who holds the record for the most vacation days. Of anyone in the United States. Yes. Anyone. The president doesn't take as many days off as Mr. Kuna. But he's back celebrating his 20th anniversary. The 20th wedding anniversary. Went was cruising. Great. Went cruising. It was awesome. Really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. And it was you, a great to unplug. And you snuck a shoot in there. Yes, I snuck a shoot in there. He snuck I, a, can you show anything? I, can you show that picture? Um, let's see. What can I show? Yeah, I can show one of these. All right. There's only a few that I can. All right, tell the story because this is kind of interesting real quick. So, uh, yeah, so that's one of the shots. Uh, we went out, uh, or I went out to shoot the uh, hop test for a launch provider, uh, Stoke Space, and out in Seattle. And uh, what we did is I flew out um, the night, or two nights before, uh, set up my cameras remotely, had everything set up, then flew back to go on the, my vacation while my camera sat out there. And then the next day they launched and got these images. It took so, the pictures without Eric being there. I don't even need to be there. He doesn't even need to be there. So I just set up everything and let him go. So there next you go. Next thing is Eric will pay someone out there to set it up for him. <laughs> yeah. And Eric won't have anything to do with the whole process. All right, uh, before we go on, we got lots of interesting stuff happening today. I am continuing to roll out my fall collection. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank yes. you. The Julio Aguilar shirt. Yeah. So uh, anyway, rolling out that just I want to keep you guys up on my fall wardrobe. There you go. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, what else? We got lots we of giveaways of today. Things. Today's Blind yeah. Photo Critique Day. It's not going to be a good day for a lot of people. It will be a great day if they keep their minds open. All right. It's going to take some very open minds. Open today. minds. But we got some giveaways. What do we have today? We've got a platypod handle. I actually used one of these and let me see the shot. It, this was the shot. This was with a platypod handle. So there it that is. shot right there. I've got it on a platypod stick to the ground and just, I needed a little bit more height so I wasn't too close to those rocks. So I just gave it a little bit more light, height, height with there that you handle. Go. You know so what it was? Go. That helped you. You had a, you had a, uh, a situation and now you could handle it. Yes, I could handle it. Ba -boop, uh, boom. Ba -doop. Yeah. And then uh, let's see what else we're giving away. How do I do that in Photoshop book? That's not the right book. Uh, how do I do that in Photoshop That's book? That's the right book. But we're also going to be giving away the Adobe Photoshop for digital photographers book that I was just holding That's up. The, That's the wrong book. There you go. And then we're going to be giving away a copy of On One No Noise 2023. Great Woo! plug in for not only removing noise, but now adding sharpening. Is that your picture right there? Yes, that is. Right Look from, at that. Uh, that's Mr. That's Case. from outside of Phoenix, Arizona. There All the way go. to Tacoma. And then we're going to be giving Atlanta, away LA. a, a V-flat from V-flat World. So one V-flat. Uh, this is U.S. shipping only. So if you don't have a U.S. shipping address, you cannot win this. Uh, but uh, one V-flat, U.S. shipping only. Uh, but everybody can get something from V flat. All they got to use is that code Kelby 10 at checkout and save 10% off of their V flats. You know, uh, we get emails from people that have won these mm -hmm. and they're like, I love these. These are awesome. I'm like, we know. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we love those. They're great. Um, and then we're going to give away a copy of retouch for me's eye bundle. So this is their, you know, uh, specific to retouching the eyes. 
And everybody can get a discount on that, though, if they want. Uh, they can get a 20% discount from um, Retouch for Me. They use the promo code KELBY120. Unfortunately, you have to go to this long page here that we're going to talk about. It's www.promo.retouch, the number four, and .me. So remembering that is www.promo.retouch, number four, .me. There you go. So to enter those prizes, all you got to do is leave a comment, uh, tell us uh, where you're from, what you would like to win. And if you have any questions throughout the critique process, just let us know in the comments as well. And I think Scott's going to write that address up there. You got to make sure you have the www in it. I wish it could be shorter. It would all be right. nice. But oh, you that put it is, in the chat. All right, is here it is. Link. For those of you who aren't in the chat, is www. That's the link to get the promo. Retouch number four. Dot me. All right. Boom. Okay, we ready to get to work? Yes. Let's right. get to work. So we asked our viewers to send us three of their best photos. Send us three of your best photos for an honest blind critique. The reason it's blind is we don't mention the people's names so we can give an honest critique and we don't really want to embarrass anybody. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to send you in the right direction to help you make better photos. It's not just to be mean, but that is a bonus. But um, it's not just to be mean. But and that's, a, that's what it is. This is an honest. I know I'm going to get emails over this one. We're going to get emails over this one. Yeah. But it really is only to help you. And I can tell you, if you keep that open mind, that everybody who has had a negative comment about their critique has always come back later and been like, oh, yeah, you were right. Yeah, and they say because how angry I, they were at the time, and then they go back and they yep. fix it, and they're like, because oh, my god!" Because nobody in their life has ever told them the honest truth about the photography because they've been asking their family members who are always going to say, you love photography, so I'm never going to be critical of your photography. Yeah, I want to take away your fun. No. Yep. All right, let's get to work. Here we go. We got three images, right? So here's this one. Mm-hmm. And this one? Mm -hmm. Is that Fifi? No, it's Doc. And, that and one. this one. All right. So I, I think you got one winner here. That first one. Yeah, I like that is, one. Is very, very nicely done. I'm not crazy about these buildings and stuff mm -hmm. back here. And but. That, and that, uh, well, yeah. I like the toning. And I like the way there's like a burst of light right in here. Mm -hmm. There's some, like you could take you could away take those these towers poles. and they stuff. They don't need to be there. And it, what is this? Oh, is that that's, that's, that's part of the wing? Wings. Yeah, okay, yeah. no, no, that's okay. So this one I think is nicely processed. I like your your angle. There's just a lot of good stuff going on here. Blast. This one, unfortunately, it. is. I don't know why uh, this. Can I say something about yeah. this? I don't know why this is so pervasive in aviation photography, where it's like let's just blast it with light and make a long exposure at night, and that's call it good. Right. So first off, what, what the brightest thing in the photo Foreground. is this yeah. right here. Like, why is this there? So, like, let me see if I can pop this open. And now, that might be an easy fix. Yeah, go to the linear gradient tool, darken the exposure, and then drag this in that away. Yep. And then, probably, you could say subtract, Subject. get the brush, and maybe get rid of that tire. You might even do a subtract subject, which I do a lot. Or actually, you know what we would have done better was the object select tool. Yep. There well, you go. that that's a start, and maybe even mm -hmm. pull back some uh, while we're yeah, here. Yeah, that helps. Let's pull back some of the highlights in that foreground. Yes, that helps. Right, but still, it's just it's kind of harsh lighting. So here's what I would recommend. I, I gotta tell you, I have seen very very few shots of static shot static that's called a static when yeah. the airplane's on the ground a static shot at night that i thought was really good i've seen a ton of static shots at dusk that are fantastic yes that black background just doesn't do a lot for the photo so it's it's kind of overlit you know it's so the whole thing is overlit i wonder if i can pull back the highlights to help the over uh, yeah, I think light you're still on the layer Aren't you? Aren't no, no, I, I hit the I hit the thingy. Yeah, it's just it's it's taking out the highlights off the ground because that's where the highlights are the yeah. most. So I'm just trying to kind of come up with a so it doesn't look so harsh. But I mean, here what I've done, you can see the difference side by side here. Is look how lit the ground was. But I got to tell you, I I if, I if you want to make a killer shot, you you know who does this so well is Moose Peterson. 
you know, Moose shoots these shots at sunset and you get beautiful light on the plane. What you're missing is beautiful light on the plane. And you go, but Joe McNally did that. Joe McNally shot that thing at flashes. dawn with 30 flashes, <laughs> but the flashes weren't lighting the plane. They were on the plane putting light around it. It was, it, it, you could go look at National Geographic. Yeah, like for that's, his. that's when you, if you really want to do this, you have to sculpt light. Yep. You have to shape light. Yeah, this and is, right now it is just blasting yeah, light. It's like it's a car like headlights. Like headlights or big torches and just blasting the light out. And then this is okay. It, it's it's overly crunchy, very, very, very like you you over processed it to death. Yeah, you can see on his skin how like yeah. his elbows are his like elbows popping are like out, and, dirty yeah. and stuff. And I, I just think you went too far the with this. The jeans look like they got so much texture. But in this is a winner. That's hands down a winner. This needs work. I I would have just shot this at I still sunset. think the, those shots have potential it's just sculpting the light it's but i'm just telling you it may blasting. have potential but i i still haven't seen i, I don't know the size of the softbox you i've been to talking to, to larry grace about this there's something we can do here the, i know there's but, but a, i don't see a lot of night shots i don't and it's All just right. really sad it, it's tough okay yeah. but anyway so we got a little bit of work to do i think number one is pulling off not using so much light not using mm -hmm. so much post-processing but you got one real good winner there, so that's right. that's the start. All right, let's take a look Next. here. All right, oh, this one's these look breaking good. the mold. This uh, one looks pretty good from the thumbnails. Oh yeah, Th these are pro yeah. shots. <laughs> you're these doing are it great. You're doing you it. You got the perfect. You're getting moments. it done. Yeah, you can nitpick and well, okay. Uh, in the studio, your the monitor. The foot's cut off, but I'm looking on my laptop. It's not. No, these are these are really well done. You got a hand coming in here. Yeah. So if it was for my portfolio, I would take the hand out. Yeah. If you're reporting, is this turning it in for the school or somebody else? You got to leave it in. Yeah. Because all right. But still, great these shot. are great. These are the. Or the these are these are sports shots. Peak moment these of action. These are pro. Shots. These are pro sports shots. These are great. Just great. Keep doing what you're doing. You're already Look at that tennis shot. That is yeah, perfect. these are great. They're they're wonderful. <laughs> so cool. All right, let's take a look at these. That's Ooh, very nicely nice. executed. Yeah. Finally, a long enough long, long exposure. Yes. Finally, yeah, the sky's not great, but this this has a what kind of feel to it. A very soft yeah, kind of. Like yeah, I, I think this is very nicely done. It's like fairyland kind of like glow yep. to yep. it. Yeah, this is very nicely done. Hmm. Interesting. This is nicely done, but to be honest with you, if it was just the one on the right and the other two weren't there, I think you'd have a winner. Is that like a moray or something? There is something, There's a like pattern, a pattern in here. Like a moray going on. And a there. pattern behind it over here. It's weird. But pattern aside... I like how they have three. Three's good. It's an odd mm -hmm. number, but these two aren't helping. Mm -mm. The star of the show is this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Imagine if that the other two were out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we can do more than imagine it. Oh, hey, let's not. Let's remove them. All right. We're going to select them. Hit generative fill. Click generate, wait 12 seconds. Or longer if you used up your 250 credits. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe longer. Maybe longer, exactly. But that doesn't kick you until November 1st. Yes. Aha. That's a stronger shot. That is. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. But still. Still. Not bad. Interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. Interesting. This one's got to go. I, I don't even know where to look. What's the subject? It's just like a long exposure of... It's not even long it's, enough. It's, it's not, not even not, not a long enough long yeah, exposure. Yeah, it's not long enough. This, this is completely out of place with your other two photos. There's not a subject. That doesn't look like the same photographer that took these two. This I, is, would, I would agree. This one's got to go. It's just... It, there's. I don't even know where I'm looking. Am I looking here? That's the weak here? link. Am I, yeah, this is just... The, it's the kind of a weak link. photo. I think they were going for that circular pattern in the water, but it, it just doesn't work. It's not working. But these are working great. Yeah, more of that. So you're obviously a skilled photographer. Yeah, I think you made a bad call on this third one, but that that's yeah, that's okay. Good photographer though. All right, All right. we're buzzing. On. We're buzzing. We gotta keep on buzzing. We're buzzing. All right. Ooh. I really Ooh. like these. These are fine art. 
I love that. I, these are terrific. I, I think these are just on the money. I think these are just very, very interesting, very well done. These are the kind of stuff you see in art competitions and hanging in lobbies and I, and the, the way the colors work together. I, I think these are, uh, I think these are terrific. Yes. Just terrific. I, I take my hats off to you for the artistic. These are straight up fine art and I love them. I mean, those, these are the kind that you could sell very easy. Mm -hmm. Like that would go in somebody's home that had that color patterns yep. in their home. That you they need, would love. You need to find art storefronts. Art store, yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. Yep, art Make more of those. Yeah. Open up an art storefront. Start you'll be good. Them. Yep. Those are I, I'm I'm very impressed with those. All right. Let's take a look at these. These are all right in Kuna's uh, air. Ooh. Now we've seen these the, the jets do this breakaway. Yep, yep. And this is a very unusual angle that, and I like unusual it. angle and and how the planes are tilted. It, yep. it looks very cool. This is a really I good. I, and I've seen a. I've seen so many of that, and it's different. This yes. is different. I really like it. Look I, at the vape like on it. the top the one. Nice vape on the top one. Yeah, he's pulling away. As he's breaking away. I like. Yeah. I think this is a terrific. All great right. moment, and you're in tight enough. All right. oh, I, I will love say nothing. That. I will just pass this on to Mister. This is great. Look at the Isn't foreground. That nice? The foreground's lit up but just not enough. Over, not but over. It doesn't lit. look like a daylight nope. shot because that's a problem with Milky Way anymore. Everybody goes daylight foregrounds. Yeah. And the other thing is the way the the intersects kind of you have these two mountain peaks that are kind of going down to a valley and you put the core there. I, I'm hoping that was intentional because it draws you in and sucks you in and gets the pattern with the Milky Way. And how's the color? It, color is great. I this mean, is I, on I, it. I, this, uh, you're doing a great job. I mean, the aviation one's on. And then look at that. Northern Lights. Northern Lights. That's a great one, too. I mean, you got the you got just long enough exposure. You're not blurring the stars, but just long enough to pick up all the colors in the aurora. Yeah. I, I, it'd all be good. nice to have a little bit more foreground. I mean, you're just kissing the bottom there. Just a little bit more, now, but are you, at the are same you saying, time. Uh, see it more or show more of it? Yeah, have something a little bit more interesting in it. Oh, like right okay. now, it's just sky. There's right. just nothing. Now, yeah. again, though, that's hard with the Aurora because a lot of times you're restricted of where you can go right. and all that. So, But it's a great hey, job. Three Overall, out of three. three out of three ain't bad. Three out of three ain't bad. All right. Well, these look good. All right. Yeah, see, the monitor on the studio is cutting off the head, but that, that is not. That's perfect. Yeah. And the feet. Mm, yeah. I okay. love this one. Yeah, that one's great. I love the backlighting and all that kind of yes. stuff. The only thing I might consider here is, is dropping a neural filter so you don't see the cars in the back so much. Yeah. But this is backlit. It's terrific. The expression, the player jumping over. Yeah, you're over. right. You could make those cars blur right out. Yeah, I, could, yeah. I think you could blur those a bit more. Uh, this that one's one, nice. I, I love that. I one. love. It. I, I, I'm not crazy about this thing here, yeah. but there's not much you could do about it to still get the players in. But you got a great reaction here, and or, or this guy. This is all. This is all good. Yeah, you're killing it. This is this. No, uh, this is one, my least favorite, least favorite. of them. Yeah. And, and I know that it, it's great because his helmet's coming off, but his reaction, unfortunately, is kind of killing the shot. Well, and the other guy is also closing his eyes. It's just like yeah, nobody has their eyes open. Maybe they were sleeping. Yeah. No, this is the weakest of the three. But, guys, can look at the closeness. He's in yes. tight. You're not showing a bunch of superfluous stuff. So you're doing a lot of things right and here. And that's These really helping with the background because yeah. it's a non-crowded stadium. It's not a big yeah. – yeah, this is, no, this this is, is more like – all a, good. But, again, you're at the level of you could – you can shoot anything. Yep, yep, you can shoot pro sports yep. and all. That's, no you're problem. doing good. Very, very good. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, coming up next, we're going to look at a whole bunch more photos. We're whipping through them today at a pretty yes. nice clip, which is good. And we've had some good shots, and we've had some yeah. ones that need some work. But uh, I'm encouraged, but that's going to change. Uh-oh. So stick uh -oh. around. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Mimo Meidani. I'm a black and white long exposure photographer and I'm one of the instructors in Kelby 1. I do have a class for you to watch. You know what it is about? Of course you know, when it's Mimo, it's black and white. As I always say, a great black and white photography isn't simply a photograph that does not have any color. Good black and white photo is far more than that. 
And in this class, I'm going to teach you how to improve your black and whites. I'm going to teach you to go out there and practice your composition, understanding lights. And I'm going to give you some detail on that. Then together, we are going to do some editing. We're going to go deep into the black and white, though very simple. We're not going to use much Photoshop. We're just going to be focused on Lightroom and also simple steps to improve your black and white photography. Please stay with me on this class at kelby1.com. How do you create a sense of timelessness and romance and intrigue when you do your travel photos? Wouldn't it be great if you came back with these photos that literally take the viewer away, where they look at the photos and they're like, where, where's that? I want to go there. You've seen that type of travel image where all of a sudden you're just like, you're taken away. And what it is, I think, one of the big things is the sense of timelessness. It's where you compose the shots, and it's not just when composing, it's what you do in camera and what you do in post-processing that makes all the difference in the world. Well, we just created this course here in beautiful Portugal where we show you how to create that timelessness. And what we do is we're traveling all over the city to show you again and again and again, here's how to create that, that timeless look that doesn't look modern, that doesn't pull you out of the romance and the, and the passion of the scene. And, and it lets you tell a story, a timeless story. It's gonna be that thing that helps you elevate your images to the next level. And we've done an entire course just on that. We're all over walking everywhere. We're going across the river. We're showing you all kinds of different scenarios, but it's not just what we do in camera. It's what we do in camera and what we do in post-processing. So come watch my brand new class on creating timeless travel images. And it's exclusively at kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we are back. We are. Nobody counted us in, but I just saw us on screen, so I'm thinking that we are. And the jib started moving, yeah, too. Yeah, the jib started moving, and we were in. Hey, uh, you just saw that that little uh, uh, trailer there about, about Kelby 1. Uh, so this week, Mimo's black and white class came out. I don't know if you guys know it that, that don't, don't watch the show all the time. We have a new class that comes out every single week all year long so what's your think think about this if you can devote one hour to learning a week mm -hmm. just one hour and and what i tell people is this yes a new class comes out every week and not every class will be for you because somebody might go i'm not interested in black and white we have a thousand classes so that week take that hour don't just say well i'm not interested in this week's class so i'm not going to do it nope this is where you go to the archive and you go in there and you find okay what is the what is something i'm really interested in and we have learning tracks so you can get on a track you get on a track for wedding you can get on a track for drone photography you can get a track for lightroom for photoshop for whatever you're thinking macro photography landscape photography, whatever it is there's a learning track that'll lead you and track your progress as you go through the learning tracks yep. so anyway there's a million classes and of course we specialize in Lightroom and Photoshop. So if pro post processing is where you're stuck. Uh, so now you can buy any single class you want. We sell the online classes. You can just go buy one or you can get a membership and watch them all. But go to kelby1.com mm -hmm. and uh, ask your friends about it. 
Don't don't take me my inheritance. <laughs> don't take our word for it. Don't take our word for it. We get emails ask, all the time about it, ask, along with the critiques of right. our critiques. Look at that. Sharon emails. just wrote, so cool that so many classes come to us. You can learn anything. Yep. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah. yeah, don't 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 take our word for it, but go try it out. You will love it. And if you don't love it, we'll give you your money back anyway. So, you know, because <laughs> yeah. we care. Yep. All right. Let's get there a look at go. some more photos. Here we go. So this is a good one. Look at that one right off oh, the bat. Oh, great Talk pan. about hand holding and panning with a slow shutter speed. The the reason why this photo is great, besides that, like the light is just perfect. Because uh, look at the light on the car. You know, mm -hmm. you got highlights. You don't have a bunch of reflections and weird stuff. But the wheels are spinning. The background's moving. It's just it's very very nicely yeah, done. That's beautiful. Just all the way around. Uh, look at this one. Yeah, you that's good. You're that's in tight. That's where you want to be. Yes, in tight. and you can see the pilots in the cockpit, and it's sharp and it's crisp, and and everything's going so good until right here. Uh oh, where was the focus? Where's the focus? So that the that the the, pilot's the, out of focus. the jet is way out of focus. Like it's it's just these are very out. hard shots. These are very hard. Right. I know when you're trying to do a window or you want to do a frame. Yeah, when you, you want to do thing, a frame when you have the right. thing in the foreground out of focus. There has to be something That's strong. Gotta be and sharp. It's got to be sharp. Now, and it would also be better if there was I don't know. something across the top Let of the frame. Let me see if we can like get... See if we can get Topaz to save it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll definitely help, but I don't know if it's going to help. It'll help, but that. I don't know. Well, let's just give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. It's going to say it is out of focus and noisy. That's... Let's just... Let's, I'm, not, I'm, I'm willing to deal with the noise. Let's go to motion blur, very blurry. It's a lot better. It's definitely better. Give it a second to update. Yeah, it's better, but it's never going to be what, what that's your what others are that so focus. good. The other thing that you have to think about too when you're shooting when they're on the ground is you also have a little bit of heat distortion yep. that you have to deal with. So that also softens up your images when planes are on the ground and it's yeah. a hot day with heat distortion. It's too bad. I, the idea is actually the, fairly decent. Yes. This is a hard thing to pull mm -hmm. off shooting through yep. something like this. But I'm going to give you my hats off. I think you're doing a really good job. So don't take that one too harshly. Just understand that, that that's got to be really, really sharp. You don't want to get Larry Grace calling you up on the phone and telling you. Oh, no. That's not. All right. It's the worst when you have Larry Grace calling you. Hey, do you see that sensor dust in your photo? Like, no, I didn't, Larry. Thanks. All right. Just, uh-oh. I, I. Oh, yeah. The, these are, I mean. They're photos. All right. All right. So, first off. These are like snapshots of a pretty girl. They're not really professional portraits. They're just, I mean, anybody well, could take she's these. She's in shadow right there. She's in she's shadows, shadow. which is bad, right? So you're, she's in the shadow. The, the is good. thing that you wanted to the, be The thing not you in want shadow. to be not in shadow is, is desperately in shadow. So you need to pull her out of those shadows. Uh, and you could probably, I, but she's on such a bright background. It's this is this is just going to yeah, take so a little. You, so you're fighting with yourself constantly because the yeah. lighting isn't good. So and this is why the lighting here. is so important in the beginning with a portrait. Let's go select background, and try to save that background to some extent. Yeah, you can pull that back yeah. a bit. I mean, it's gone a long way right. so far. And then I would say create new mask, select people. Let's get her face because her chest is lit. Right, her that area but we need her facial skin to be brighter so let's bring this up a bit and open up the shadows the lighting's bad but you've also chopped off her fingers down here yeah. it's it's all bad and i don't it's it's not a very good good pose either but but i want to point out something bigger than this she has the pretty much the exact same smiley look in all three photos. You're not telling me anything about your subject at all, just that she's smiley, yeah. right? I'm not getting anything. There's no thoughtfulness. There's no other thing. It's just smile, okay, smile, okay, smile. And you're showing all kinds of things. And this leaning back thing, she's leaning back here. She's leaning back there. She's, what's with the leaning back? Lean back. Lean back. 
So the leaning back thing's annoying. Well, and I think maybe that's one of the things pointing out here to critique is make sure you're varying those poses so it's not consi consistently the same because then what you're doing is you're just creating three leaning back photos. Yeah. I mean, these... It's, it's not working too for her. Yeah, and, and they're just... Like a, a stronger photo here. I, I know that you want to show the bridge and all that stuff, but you're not doing your subject any, any favors here. Um, would be, I'm thinking something in in there would be certainly better but then you just got messy trees and stuff around her and i think we'd bring this up a bit too and i would have brought her her hand on here so you don't lose her fingers and stuff there they're just you got a nice subject an attractive young lady is there somewhere to point this person on kelpie one <laughs> I'm like certain. A, like maybe I'm we could do that. Is. Well, first you could watch some of the posing classes. Exactly. That's I would what I'm start thinking. There, but you also you need to watch the. I, I did a class on natural light photography because mm -hmm, that's all, what you're all doing. The photos. Yeah. They're they're not bad. You're not shooting in direct light, but you're also not really getting good use of the shadows and things mm -hmm. like. You just need you need some work. I'm sorry. You, you, you need some work And that's what it comes down to, working with natural light portrait. And then the big thing was the posing. We have tons of classes on posing. Yeah, and also. And in, in the things he's talking about, like not arching back and yeah. making it look weird. Yeah, like they there's, all There's look, also the hand placement is weird on all of them. Hand placement's weird on all of them. Yeah. Uh, the posing is all weird. The lighting is very flat and meh. You know, it's like, there, there, you, there you go. It's so... I'm sorry, you need some work. But can I tell you where to start? Yeah, you watch these classes, they will help. But you need to start following some good portrait photographers on Instagram so you know what you're getting. Like you could have separated her from the background here and it would look so much better. You could mm -hmm. have zoomed in and used a low numbered f-stop like f4, f5.6, f2.8 if you had it. Yep. And it would be in a totally different picture because it will be separating her from the background and getting well, a much more... Do we you know the do, focal lengths You those? can do better on, on, an, on an iPhone in portrait mode would look better than these. Uh, I can yeah. look. I can, well, I can give look. you a look. Let's Because I think they're wider. F5.6, but you're at 55. 55. And oh, you have a 300. You have a 300. So that's you the whole thing. Step back. Way back and Zoom zoomed in. in. And then the background that's a little out of focus would have been very would out have of focus. Very. There's a lot of work here. The color's not good. It's these are these are just very amateurish, snapshotty. And I would say they look like you're talking with your phone, but you can do way better on your phone than this. Yeah. You got a lot of work to do here. But so, yeah, that, that separation from the subject is a big do two one. Things. But the posing. Start following good good portrait photographers on Instagram. And number two, go watch some of these classes. And you don't have to necessarily watch ours. You could go watch you, you can go watch portrait tips, just little short ones on, on, on YouTube that would get you in the right direction. They will, but at the end of the day, if you really want to take it seriously, yeah. you should go get yep. some training that yep. is seriously curated and not just made for free. If you want to take photos like these these are really good. Yeah. Look at these. Wow, that's a great Come one. Come on, so sharp and so crisp. Ooh, that's oh, nice. these are beautiful. These are just, and, and this is, look at the set. This is what we're separation. talking about. See the separation in the background? There's all kinds of trees and who knows what behind there. But you don't see them because they are using the right camera technique. Forget that this was a bird. Let's say that it was the young lady you were photographing. Put her on this background, and the, all of a sudden, the whole thing's better. Right, because you can tell behind there, those are trees yep. and leaves and brown yep. leaves and, and sky. sky. Yeah, And what you've created by doing that is that separation to where it simplified the frame yep. so much that all you're looking at is the bird. Yep. If those no trees behind were in focus, you'd be looking at that too, and it would totally take away from the picture. Yeah, these are just beautifully done. I don't even know what to tell you. Just keep, keep, keep doing, doing what you're it. doing. Fantastic stuff there. Very, very nice. All right, let's see what we got here. We got a dude who's out of focus. Ooh, I like this now. All right, th there's one thing you could do, two things you could do that would, would, this is good though. I like where you went here. I think you're making making a good portrait. That was a however, big leap. Yeah, however, y your background's out of focus and I don't know what your, your uh, what you call it, your, it doesn't show your data. However, there's two things we can do, and this is going to make a big difference. Do you notice the brightest spot is right mm -hmm. here? Let's go get the 
Let's just get rid of that. Let's just, oh, not a radial gradient. The linear gradient, once again, let's go darken the highlights and the exposure. Look at that. Just that one thing, because I, th I think you did a good job here. Mm -hmm. I think this, this, is, this is the, I, whoever owns this dog is thrilled with this shot. Yep. But it's just a little too bright right there. Now, that's kind of the stuff the photographers will notice. Let's pull that back, and then at the same time, let's brighten the face. Let's go to create a new mask. Let's go to, let's see if it does, it's not going to do select people. Well, maybe it will. I, yeah, no. Nah, it but it'll people. do select subject, and then you could refine it from yeah, there. Yeah, you could do select subject, and then you could say subtract brush. And then we don't want, let me make the brush big. We don't want this. Right. That's the way I would do it. There you go. And then just go over here, and let's just brighten up his or her face. A little bit. That's good. And then That's the last nice. thing... <clears throat> Which is going to finish this off beautifully because this Sharpen. is a that's a nice dog. Neural filters. Mm -hmm. Go to Photoshop's neural filters. Scroll down to depth blur. Turn it on. Make sure focal focus on your subject is turned up and crank up that blur strength and just wait. It's just a lens wait. upgrade. You're going to get a lens upgrade. There you go. Mm -hmm. I might have gone a little too yeah, far. Yeah, I that. probably <laughs> come back to like 60s or 70s. Sorry, went a little too far. Went a little too far. But see, that was, you got a nice, that's a yeah. nice dog. I love but that. you shot it. Look, the, the post processing stuff is one thing. We can fix the post processing, but you shot it right. And that's the big thing. So I think you did a nice job on there. The post processing is, is easy. Um, and all right, you're so close here. Mm -hmm. So close. Remember the hummingbirds that we just saw? The entire hummingbird was in focus so i think what it is here you're using too shallow of a depth of mm -hmm. field yeah I'll, I'll, I'll bet you that those other hummingbirds were like f8 or or something uh, let's go see f8 f8 boom <laughs> right the whole hummingbird so <clears throat> they are standing back they're zooming in tight at f8 and but, they're okay with getting a little ISO in there because they're creeping yep, up to 500 yep, because up. they went to F8 yep. intentionally. Yeah, That's what you have to understand with those numbers is sometimes you have to let the ISO ride up in order to get the right depth of field. And that's oh, okay. Oh, there's no data here. But, but I think that you're right. That's what it is. It's too shallow of depth of field. You're so close. You're so close. You're right yep. on the edge here because you did everything else right. You're at the right height. You got the background blurred. Everything's there. If you'd have had the sharpness, because mm -hmm. but look, the sharpness is right there. Look at that. That's yeah. deathly sharp. And that's why you're right. But it's the depth of up field. up here in the eye and, and all, look it's at the, the depth look of field. Look at the beak, how the beak right. just totally goes out. All you got to do then is all we're doing is changing our f-stop. Mm -hmm. And you got a winner. Let's look at one more real quick before we have to take another break because we got another one coming up. But good job overall. This mm -hmm. one's just straight out of focus. That and one. That one's out of place too. I don't even. Yeah, I'm not like even your sure. Other ones like are you really got really killing it. It's just the guy with a hat and glasses it's, on that's looking off to the side, and he has yeah. leaves coming in from the side, and and looks like a zero behind him. Yeah, something. he's not giving you anything. He's not looking at you. Yeah. He's not engaged. And I think you've got you've got some connection with the animals. Do that. Do more of that. But that's overall, I'm liking it. Uh, did I was I going to look at one more? I think so. Yes. I'm trying to get through a, a number of them today. Hmm. Uh oh. The, the butt. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. All right. So these. All right. First off, it's not the right angle of a horse and, and the rider. And the rider, you're not. You're at the wrong angle. You have to wait to them for to yep. transverse to come towards you to yeah. be going. And the. the they just look better. I don't see an eye of the horse. I don't see an eye of the rider. No. Uh, I see the butt of the horse is the prominent thing in the shot. It's just you and need the, the you need to wait. Way too bright. You need to wait for that horse to turn. And then yep. yeah, like Scott said, you also need to find positions in the ring. And I only know this because my daughter is just obsessed with horseback riding. Is positions in the ring to where it's showcasing the rider and the horse. Mm -hmm. This is the wrong angle for mm -hmm. showcasing the rider and the horse. This is all bad. Mm-hmm. All right, now this shot is cute. 
It is cute, it's cute but, but it's, it's cropped in a horrendous. It's weird. Look at the the horse's legs are cro- are cropped off in a yep. very unfortunate way. The background's way too bright, and the color is way off. So let's start off by at least yeah, warming yeah, it up and putting some color in there. It's, and it's almost got like too much magenta in it or something. <laughs> yeah, this is Even this is horse kinda, has magenta in the, and yeah. I know horses don't have magenta in there. They don't generally I, have magenta. I've never seen a horse with magenta. So maybe yeah, the, the white balance is way off. I'm trying to see if I can find something that'll get us a better balance here. But no, this is I mean, look at when you're hitting that, how it's tinting. It's going way up and way down, yeah, even though white balance. that's what it is. You have way too much uh, magenta tint and then way too cool tint. And that's why everywhere he's selecting, it's going in the opposite. Yeah, the background's also way too bright. You need to select background and darken that background a lot. Well, that you background. can see there when it selected the background, it didn't even. Usually, Photoshop is very good about the selecting the background. Yeah. When you did that, it missed that whole middle yep. of the background because the exposure is off. Yeah, and unfortunately, I know what you're trying to do. Like her ribbons are down here, and all the all this stuff is down here. And if I cropped it where it should be cropped, you know, it should be cropped more like. This yep. would be, but then you lose all the. I mean, that's yeah, a but nice. This is stronger shot. It's a way stronger, stronger shot, shot. But it, but I know what you would say. But you cut off the ribbons, so. And if you want those ribbons, that's where that separation, getting something, so put them in a place in this where you don't have so much of the warmness, uh, the the brightness coming in the background, which is blowing everything out. Yeah, these are are rough. Let me go down here to depth blur. Let's. Focus subject. Let's crank it up a bit. Oh, there you can even it's see. Helping. Yeah, it's helping. that helps the background a lot. That I went too far. It's it's too much. I don't know. Maybe not. But that's certainly a stronger image because the connection with the girl and the horse is wonderful. I mean, that's so the story. That's the story. That's the story. I, 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 you might have to think, how do I get the ribbons in there? You know, I, I don't know. But, but having that background blurred. And and this connection is really well, nice. And that's that's sometimes as photographers too simplifying. Go back to simplifying the frame. I understand the importance of the ribbons. I get it. But at the same time, that connection and that story is more important than the ribbons. And, and this one, unfortunately, I I like what you're trying to do. So hear me out. While these pictures suck, <laughs> they don't suck. I'm just kidding. While these pictures are not as strong as you want them to be. I like what you're trying to do. I yeah. think you're going in the right direction. Like you got the right moment between the rider and the horse. That's 10 points. On the other one, you you, you just didn't have the right angle, the very first one. Like yeah. Eric said, you know, you want to see the rider's face. You want to see the horse's face. You don't want a shot of the horse's butt. And then the third one here, a detail shot. I like what you're trying to do. I think you're going in the right. So don't take this too too harsh because I think you're going in the right direction. That the themes are right, it's the angles aren't quite there yet. Mm -hmm. It's really that, it's it's yeah. more of a little bit of composition stuff than anything. It's not like your camera technique is bad or any of that stuff, so it's not camera, it's not buy a new camera, it's not buy a new lens. It's work on your angles and work on your positions work to get the Work on the shot. composition. But do I think it's great that you're going for mm -hmm. detail? Yes, absolutely. Did you capture a great moment? Yes, you did. Did you, the right idea of getting, you didn't cut any of the horse off in the first one. It's, it's all, you're on the right track. So. Yeah, it's almost like, and that's what part of photography is about patience and being able to wait for those moments yep. when it is in the right light. Or then moving around the ring, which yep. a lot of times what I have to do is move around the ring for the background. That's true. We have to do that in sports all the yeah, time. All the time. There are times football, where you're always I'm walking around. Football and I'm trying to just the background is killing the foreground. The background's killing the shot. And I'm like, I don't want to shoot from here. All right. Displace. We're gonna take a short break coming up next. We've got more images. We're halfway through, so we're doing good, and we're only at our second break. So Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there.
I'm Amanda Lusan, your posing coach. Come join me in my latest Ultimate Posing Guide. In this class, you'll be able to learn everything about posing like pose your feet, your legs, your arms and hands, pose your whole body from head to toe, and also understand and learn how to facial expression and body expression. You learn how to pose with props on the chair, sitting on the floor, lying on the floor. Can you imagine? And you will learn the foundation and advanced pose as well. Are you ready for this? So join me in my latest class on calvin1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back, me and Eric, and yep. uh, we got some shout outs yeah, to some we got folks watching today people live. joining all over. So we got Cheryl saying, hi, y'all. Actually, you all from D Dallas. Uh, my wife would have said y'all. Um, and then uh, Jerry saying hi from a very wet Tacoma, Washington. Uh, Josh saying hi from DAC. Stuart, hey, Stuart, hey, saying hi from uh, Long Island. Uh, Andrew, all the way from the UK, Stoop. and then uh, Marty from uh, California, George from West Texas, uh, we've got uh, Lakes Rhino from the Lake District of the UK, Jeannie from uh, uh, Kansas, we've got Dave M from San Diego, Mehdi all the way from, the, from Denmark, Claire all the way from England, Wait Glenn. a minute. Yep. That's Claire Jones. Yeah. And hi, then uh, Glenn saying hi from Schlarsville, Virginia, uh, F. Dugio, du Du Dugois. Dugois. I would, yeah, probably could Dugois from Paris. And then uh, we've got some comments here. Uh, Mehdi saying, uh, uh, I, I don't want your money. Kelby One is great. <laughs> so there you go. Um, Jeannie saying, uh, best thing I ever did for my photography addiction was signing up for Kelby One. And that's awesome. Thank you, Janie. <laughs> um, and then uh, Jill is saying, um, do you ever do blind photo critiques with iPhone photos, for example, concert photos? And of course, yes, absolutely. Jill, we don't even know. So, what so these are or? super blind. We don't yep. know when they come in. We're blind. Hey, this is a good question. I'm going to throw this to you, Mr. Okay. Kuna. So Lewis asked, and and I agree with him. It would be great to know how that multiple exposure images of those fine art images that we saw earlier, the ones yes, where the, yes. that we, we liked so much. So I've seen this technique. Uh, I was telling Scott, I've seen this technique. I've actually seen it over in one of the communities I'm in with uh, Rick Salmon online. And, and I will have to go uh, research it a little bit more because I've seen it coming up in the last few months and it's really cool how they're taking, but the basic concept being they're blending multiple images together in order to create that fine art. It's I'm not sure good. exactly the technique quite yet, but, but it is really it cool. I he'll love it. find out. All right, let's look at some images here. Here we go. Got a portrait, mm -hmm. another portrait. portrait. And a yeah, Mustang. And a Mustang. All right, let's go through them. All right, this is actually pretty good. There are a couple little minor things. Um, I think the lighting is a little bit, like it's soft, but it's a little bit too bright. It's a little too much. Just a little too much light, but but not bad. This is this is for a professional headshot. It's very professional. However, her eyes are very dark, like her like the whites Especially of her eyes are her dark faces, gray. Yeah. So that's so easy to fix, right? We can go in here. We can go to masking. So easy anymore. Go to, uh, <laughs> Used to be hard. There she is, people. And then we're going to go to... Uh, uh, no, we one need, down. We need Iris uh, yep. and Iscalera. Yep, we need it. all Boom. of that. Hit create. 
then we're going to go to exposure and just brighten those up a little bit. And not she's too got much. Really not, not, not go Don't crazy. Don't go too crazy. Yeah, you make the eye scalera yeah. too white, it looks crazy. But let's just look at just that. All right, all we did was that. But do you see how dark they were? That was that needed to be fixed, right? Just that. Yeah. And I think I think I would probably just go in and this is easy minor thing. Let's go to her face, facial skin, and then just back off maybe the highlights a little. It's just a little, just a little bit just like a little that. Bit, yeah. Just a little bit. So it's, you don't want to be so aware of of the of the light it kind of makes and, the light look more natural yeah yeah, yeah. And that's what you're looking that's for that's what you're looking for so that's good though it's i think you did a nice job on that that's so don't take that as anything just but like a little minor yeah the nitpicky. cropping and all that stuff Great. All right so this one has got two things first off i love your subject great subject he's got a lot of character however he's also got a lot of space over his head <laughs> and mm -hmm. below his yeah. arm just a so, lot of space yeah it, it, you're showing too much of a stomach and too much of this. So this would be an easy fix, right? Number one is you don't need all that headroom. Now, if you told me, Scott, I shot this for the cover of a magazine. They need to put their name in big letters. Okay, good. But I, I, I'm. That's I'm, the only reason. There's so few magazines. I'm going to guess no. Yeah, and then there's no reason to right show there. that extra stomach. Yeah. And it, it, there's. He, he just lost where, some weight right there. too. There it is. Yeah. It also trimmed him up a yep. bit. Um, I love the watch. Except for one thing. Look at the whites of his eyes. So here's what we do. In the studio when I'm shooting a portrait. Can you show me? Like, there you go. Camera here. one. All right. Camera okay. two. All right. I will tell my subject. Very often if they're not professional models and you say look over that way, they look way over that way. What do you get? That shot. What you need them to do is have them look like I'm here. I'll say look right here. I want them to look... I want them to look over here, mm -hmm. but I don't want them to look way over there because you don't want that. To, like if you sent this to PPA and you were doing your thing and they were doing giving you like a professional critique, they, they would kill you on those eyes. It's way too much sclera, way mm -hmm. too much there. However, overall, this is still a good portrait, but just going forward, keep an eye on that. That's just, it's a little technical thing, but they're all little yeah. technical things right and i've seen you talk about that in your classes and it is that thing of yep you don't want to have them look and it is a psychological thing when you tell somebody you just point that way they're going to go immediately all the way over all the way over you only want the them to point over just a right? little bit now this is both a triumph and a tragedy in one photo first off you did a lot of right things you're down low you got the aggressive nature of the car right up in front. The front and of I, the car looks amazing. And that's where that's it the ends. The front looks amazing. Look at how nice and smooth this yeah. is. You don't have weird reflections. Look at highlight, 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 highlight. And they're in the perfect places. Oh, yeah. Then, as you go over here, look at all this mess. It's starting to get dirty. All this junk. All that stuff has got to go. All, all this stuff on the hood. All, now, you can get rid of that stuff. And we have, we have a class on it. Would we have a class. It? We have a class on photographing cars, on retouching cars, on photo, from one of the best in the world, from Tim Wallace. I, the, he, just most, won, he just won product photography I, of the year. I, um, yes, yeah. He is one of the greatest photographers on the planet, and he used to. He shoots literally for Aston Martin and these big luxury car companies. In fact, in one of his classes, he shoots a Mustang. <laughs> he he shoots wood chippers. Right, and he makes wood chippers look amazing. Where I'd want to print it out and put it on my wall. <coughs> yeah, when you're that good, wow. Tim, Tim's classes are so good, and he does re uh, retouching, and he shows you exactly how he does it. That's what you need. There's a Mustang You've right there. You got the other stuff. Yeah, he did a he did a Mustang in a warehouse. In a warehouse, and the yeah. shots look amazing. Phenomenal. All right, go. good job though. You're doing good overall. You do, you're all totally, totally on the right track. All right. Oh, okay. Speaking of cars. Okay. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. <coughs> Look at the side of his car. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. This Highlight. Looks so much better. Shadow. Clean as a whistle and very interesting. 
Look at that. Ooh. Clean. I mean, yes, it's a really cool, what is that, a McLaren? Yeah. It's a very, very beautiful car in a really, really cool surrounding. But it's the the way the, the car is lit. And all that. <laughs> the reflections are perfect. It's clean. It's exactly everything the Mustang shot in. Same thing. Yeah. Now, I got to tell you, the background, I like the ground. I the, I'm not. I'm not a fan well, of this. Well, I think but of that's the background just... is starting to lead into 3D generation. Yeah, it looks is, 3D. You're generated. starting to go to that level, which is fine if okay. that's what you want to go but for. But let's just forget that and look at the car. Yeah, the car. The car yeah. is done right. Who? This guy, girl, whoever it is. Yeah, they you are, got it. They are nailing it. it. This is like pro quality stuff. They're nailing it. Sure. But I'm so glad that this one's here. Yeah, it's like so that the the other person that shot the Mustang can say okay i get it about the light because because look they're down low they did all the stuff like you did but it's just it, that's just the retouching or the light or whatever it is is just so good yeah. on the money well, that's beautiful great job those are those are like saleable prints right there make posters and sell them yeah all right oh we oh, like this aviation. don't we we like this don't we we love aviation shots let's look it's not my favorite plane, not. and it's go and unfortunately, it's like the horse. <laughs> Remember the going horse? away. It's the horse going you're away. Shoot, shots you're are not shooting awesome. the butt of the plane. Yeah, but look at these coming at you. That it's is, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not awful. It's not awful. You got prop spin. The technique yes. is all okay, but choosing a plane going away from you is usually not. You know, this is really nice. I love that. I like the tight formation. <laughs> It's a particularly good-looking jet. It's a trainer. Yep. <clears throat> Pardon me. I got something in my throat here. Can I get? Yeah, yeah. Can I get some water? I'm like out of water. Uh oh. <clears throat> but yeah, the it's also great how the uh, calm look like at the this. Smoke. Here we go. That's it. This is the shot. <clears throat> this there's, is there's so much good going on with this shot. You've got the pilot in yep. focus. Yep. And in the frame, if you took that a second later, uh, you'd have the wing blocking it. You know, so you wouldn't see the pilot. Uh, you have the prop blur going up in the front. You have the blur of the sky, too. That's the other thing. The blur of the sky when you do this. This is why it's so important to have that slow shutter uh, pan with, with these props. Is you get that blur of the sky, freezes the plane. I can read the numbers. Yep. I can see all the detail of the pilot. Yep. Perfect. This is terrific. That's terrific. Don't show anybody this one. <laughs> And again, like Scott said, it's not bad. It's just that plane would be a lot better if it was coming towards you at that same yep. angle. Yeah. And that's all it comes we down change to. change everything. And that's the problem sometimes with aviation is you can't be in all places at all the time. Yep. All right. <clears throat> nice shot. Looks like it's taken from the visitor center at Monument Valley. Yep. You got a nice sky. It's late in the day. Everything's good. You don't have a bunch of cars driving on the stuff. This is, this is nicely, yeah. nicely done. What happened here? I, yeah. Huh. That I, one's out of place. This one's just out of place. Yeah. This one is not as bad, but you know what it is? I don't know really what I'm looking at. You don't know where to look. I don't yeah. know. Am I looking on the left side, the right side? Like, this is very clear what the subjects are. I don't know what's going on. This is shot in, in nasty light. Yeah, you can in see the, the shadows. The the, look at the shadows of the. So this is midday. Midday. Like the color's not good. It's not interesting. It's not. It's not a good shot. This has potential because you did everything photographically right. The light is better. The sky is better. There's a lot of good things happening here. It's just I need something to sink my teeth into. I need a, a subject. If there was a, or a compositional element to lead me, yeah. like I have nothing to lead me into oh, yeah. something. All right, so here's what the one thing that this thing is is lacking, right? That that this one had, right in front of you, you've got this foreground area, and, and the then road. the road it leads Shoot. you in to the subject, and then you've got more behind that, and then you've got the sky. What this shot has is layers. Layers, yeah. <clears throat> it builds and builds and leads the viewer. And it sucks leads you into me the into photo. the buttes. It leads me into this here. does not Nothing. have a foreground. It kind of starts in the middle ground. Like it starts in mid ground. So this basically it never has leaves a mid, mid ground. ground. Yeah. It never leaves mid ground. There isn't even a background. It's just that you're all in mid ground. But like you, like you got a nice sky. You got a lot of nice stuff happening and softer shadows. There's a lot of 
good stuff happening. I so want to, I want to be there. I'll tell you that. It yeah, looks really cool. It looks interesting. So it looks you like got, I need a jacket. You though. got one and three quarters good ones, and this one just don't show anyone this photo. And I know you showed it to somebody one day, and they loved it, and they were like, "Oh my gosh, I love that shot!" But it wasn't anybody that knew what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. On that note. On that note, we're moving on. There's one email. There's one email coming. Oh, we're doing good. We're getting through them. Hmm. Iceberg straight ahead. Another iceberg. If I had to put mm. it in one word or a word and a half, it would be uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, the, the, there's so much like, uh, I, I mean. This photo just looks dirty. And, and yeah, you get this ice that has yeah. this coloration. You got the water's kind of frozen. Yeah, this, like, there's just, this is a. Sky's man. kind of frozen and it's an overcast sky. This is tremendously better without being good. Yeah, and I think the harder part for me and I think probably for you, Scott, is I'm pretty sure I've been there. I'm pretty sure I've been there. And I'm pretty sure I've stood there and, and seen and gone, there's so many better shots there. Yeah, this is just... It's not a long Both exposure. Are, There's not an interesting light. There's not an interesting and, sky. And, and where am I supposed to look? Is it the yeah. thing on the left or the thing in the middle or the thing on the right? Or is it that piece of ice? It's just kind of a snapshot. Like, it says that you were there that day, but it doesn't really say much more of it. And same thing with this. This one's actually... This one, I think, is well, the, just kind of... At like, least the other one has some light. Yeah, this one is... Oh, yeah, on, on a Lights scale and shadows. Of, of yeah. one to ten, it's a five. This one's like a two. But then what's up with the last one? <sighs> this is a mess. Well, you so, can simplify this with cropping and yeah, some of those you, filters. Yeah, you could certainly help, help, help it out. Let's, let's try. Yeah, like take out some of those dead leaves on yeah, the top. Yeah, take all the dead stuff out. Bring in, come into the subject. Now, I don't think the subject is in focus, uh -oh. which is bad. That's bad. We might that might be Topaz might correct you. That. Yeah, Topaz Topaz might help you out here, but it's just a messy photo. You got a stick growing straight out of his back. It's just kind of a mess. I mean, if I had to try to fix it, I would maybe go and add some vignetting to kind of put the focus back on the squirrel. I would definitely get rid of that uh, that. Let's see if we can just do a simple content aware fill just to see if it would help. But that's, you got a stick growing out of his back. It's, it's not, not awesome, man. You got to fix that little area. Now let's go see if Topaz or On One's uh, Smart Sharpen would do it or it's uh, Sharpen AI would do it. And Topaz might do pretty good. It does pretty, yeah, see, it does pretty good on animals. That helped a lot. Yeah, look oh, at how much that helped. Look how much that helped. I wanted to zoom in so I you. I will say, Topaz is built for a couple of things for sharpening. One is animals. Yep, animals. That's very good. Look, that's on the money. Yeah. That that's night and day. I mean, that just rescued your shot. That's a rescue. Yeah. Yep. I can already tell. The eye actually yeah. is sharp. I don't know if you guys can see that on the side screen you're watching. Oh, on, but yeah, it is it's like night and absolutely day. Absolutely night and day. Your color's not good either, so let's go fix that. It's just. These are just kind of snapshotties. I mean, maybe they are phone or phone photos or no. Yeah. That, that's uh, let's see, they're in at three hundred and eighty-two oh, yeah. millimeters at five point six. Yep, no, that's not a phone. You know, thirty-two hundred ISO, <clears throat> which is you another reason is? why Topaz right. Sharpen helped. Okay, because it removed noise too. All right, let's talk about what. So, what what is their problem? I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you a series of questions. Was it the f-stop? No. Lens? No. Camera body? No. It's so you're picking it, it is composition these, these you're picking subjects that are not awesome you're in an awesome place you're at these ice fields in iceland those are iceland ice fields. yes right, right? i'm pretty sure what's the name of the ice uh i can't you would have to call dave williams but it's something you're, like jock jo 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 yeah something all right if we had dave on the phone he would do it perfect right you're you're standing in front of this amazing ice thing and you yep. just chose the most yeah it's, it's Th yeah. this is about subject Right, you got you got a gear. score where you it don't see him very settings. much. He's not doing anything particularly interesting. It's not sharp. It's the, the sharpness we could fix. We did. It's boom. It's done. However, it's still just at the end of the day. You're like, yeah, that's a squirrel. I've seen a squirrel before. 
It's not like, oh my gosh, look at that squirrel. It's just like, yep, that's a squirrel. And the one thing about wildlife photography, like aviation, like we were just talking about, is it takes patience. That squirrel, if you sat around, you could probably get that perfect shot. Or you do like uh, what other people do, like uh, Paul, and set up situations set up that situations, make the squirrel look put amazing. Put butter out there, get him yeah. to do crazy stuff. But I, I, I'm gonna have to agree with Eric. If you were patient, you could probably get mm -hmm. the, maybe a whimsical looking shot yep. or something. But it's just, I look at it and I don't go, ooh, I look at it and go, yeah, that's a squirrel. And that's the same the thing I think field, with the ice fields like, uh, is what happens yep. is people get dropped off. They have a certain amount of time there because they didn't plan it around good light or all that. That's what, if you want great photography, you have to get a little uncomfortable, especially with landscape photography. You got to get uncomfortable if you want great landscape photography because if you're going to Iceland and you want to shoot that, I bet you had to be there at 3 a.m. Yeah, if you were to go to 500 PX, give me just a second, hang on. And it's just, that's what, landscape photography, if you're, it, people think it's so easy. Good landscape photography is really hard. Really yeah. hard. Let's go down. You have to, to get very that? uncomfortable Where's if you browse? want a good landscape God, photography. They constantly change how this thing looks. I know. Yeah. And I'm looking for the browse button. Yeah, you, have you have to discover. You have to discover. Discover. And then you just go to any I'll one of those. Go to popular and then suddenly it'll come All right, up. And then, or, you know, it used to. Now it doesn't. Yeah, they, uh, oh, they changed their thing. But there's a search. I'm not going to scroll down because we'll definitely see naughty ones. Yes. Um, but anyway. But point the, being, you can go on their Instagram or something and find better examples, right? Yeah. Go to, I would go to 500px, uh, type in Iceland or just Iceland, Ice Lagoon. Just type in Ice Lagoon. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a whole bunch of pictures. You're going to go, oh. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. That's just, but I, I don't know why. You just and it's usually things like here. techniques like long exposure to blur out the water and blur out the sky and then and then isolate the ice field uh, or things like uh, beams of light coming in over the ice field. You know, it's it's it needs something like that. It needs some elements to it other than just, hey. And then you were really there on a day where... That's another thing with landscape photography. You have to usually plan out multiple days because weather changes and some days you're there and it's just very overcast and gross. <laughs> it's, very, it's very overcast and gross. And that's what happened there. Hang on, I'm just waiting to see. I, I logged in and then of course it's all there. And well, this is across the street from where you were. Yeah, that's Black Sand this Beach. This is uh, Black Sand Beach with the ice across the street. But go to 500px, type in Iceland. And you'll find all kinds of ideas that'll that'll inspire you. All right, let's move on. Here, I got a shot actually. Mm. Here, this is an Iceland shot from about two hours from where you were, right there. Ooh, it's that's just nice. you got to be there at the right time. That's the diff. That's a difference. Yep. Wow, that's that's a good shot. Thanks. All right, we got some some major uh ohs here. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. What's wrong with these shots? Well, from the a sports one, aspect, they're, they're, everything. All right. Empty stadium. Okay. I can see the vignette. Wait, I mean, no, wait, gonna... no, no. There's Where no ball. Where in the hell is the ball? Where's the ball? Look, I mean, there's... there's a very, very simple rule. There's a very, very simple rule. Can you show me? <laughs> Please turn the camera. I mean, am I going to have to go to the control room? Here, wait. Actually? I'll go in the control room. There you go. There we go. It's a very, very simple rule in sports photography. It's called two eyes and a ball. That's the, that's the entry point. That doesn't make it a, a cover of, of Sports Illustrated. That's just the entry point. Two eyes and a ball. What sport is she playing? Yeah, I don't know. It could be rugby. <laughs> could two be. eyes and a ball. First off, your, your vignette is way too high. I'm all for a very, very subtle vignette. When you can see That's, it, no. You should you not can, see no. it. 2002 is calling and saying we want our vignette back. <laughs> so there's that. Number two is, where's the ball? You got to have the ball. It and is. It, it I don't looks, mind the seats. This looks like somebody that. Like, like just at practice, just like walking around. They're not even like ready <sighs> for the game. Oh, come on. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? I don't know. There's no ball. There's no they, shot. They're imaginarily There's looking no up ball. at something. There's no shot. This is not good. This is horrible. Where's the ball? 
If you don't have the ball, you don't have. And a I shot. think maybe what Scott's saying too on here is when you start out in sports photography, the reason that rule is so prominent is that is the like Scott said, that's the entry point. So until you get so good that every shot you submit has two eyes and a ball, then you can start breaking that rule. But until you can actually perfect the rule that is the thing of sports photography, perfect two eyes and a ball. All right, what's wrong with this shot? You're in the wrong place. It's great that you're getting the message, Liverpool FC women. You just don't have her in it. You need to get up from where you're at. You need to walk over to the next aisle and shoot her holding that yep, up. This is like shooting the back That's of the horse. The shot. This is shooting the back, back of, the horse, of the horse. The back of the Thank plane. You. The back, back of the horse. Back of the plane. Back of the spectator. And the most prominent thing in this photo is the person on the right, not what your subject is. That's why you need to get up go over and but oh that's a lot of trouble during the game yes yes it, it is. is that sports photography is hard too yeah because you have to be walk like that's a football you got to be you got you're walking you're running down with the players you're There's, just like running down you got to oh, get to the other you know end the worst is <clears throat> then you gotta go down up down yeah. up i would have to go i would always want to get a shot of the stadium whatever stadium i'm shooting in and i would have to go to the very very top row now there's not an elevator that takes you to the top row. I got all my gear with me. I got my vest. I got all my crap on and my, my knee pads and the whole nine yards. I take an elevator up to the third level. Then I go up and then I go and then I'd make that long walk with all my gear all the way up. It's a pain in the butt. But if but you want the shot, the shot you got to put in the effort. You're not putting in the effort. You got it. This is two eyes on a ball. And then putting right. the the subject. Let's in the take frame. let's take that right there. Don't move, and let's don't move. And let's look at yeah. these. That's where's where's the ball? Where's that? Right there. Where's, where's the ball? The where's the ball? It's in every single shot, and these are really yep. really compelling. You need these are professional. Sports shots. The ball is so important to Two ball eyes sports. And a ball. All right. You got a lot of work to do. Here we go. We're almost done here. That's nice. Mm hmm Aqueduct kind of thing yeah. with maybe a train. A train thing. It's got the leading kind of leading you through. This is over processed. I know where time. that is though. That's, That's in, in Edinburgh. Edinburgh, yeah. All right, oh, Mr. Kuna. I like Kuna, that. I yeah. Like that. yeah. <clears throat> that silhouette works. Yeah, that's it. that does. And again, the foreground's not overlit. It's kind of subdued. I like that. Yeah. What's, what's this? Does it need that, to be there? I Is it helping? It's like a structure or something. It, I think and that, I think needs, that to needs, to needs to go. That needs to it's go. It's also crooked. The that's shot is a, crooked. Yeah, oh, it's, just, it's, it's crooked. It's annoying me. Yeah, I think that's stronger right in there. Yep. Yeah, but so, how you like the color? Yeah, it's I mean the color they and got a good subtle lid. And this is the other thing Puddles. they they used a high enough ISO. Uh, they also this is a composite because they did probably one shot where they did a longer exposure for the foreground and a shorter exposure for the Milky Way because the trail stars aren't trailed. But that's great that you did that because that's what people do. Is yeah, then they go. Not Wait, yeah. 143 seconds? That was probably their second exposure, right. which was the foreground. Right. Now, what I would suggest is, if you're going to do that, raise your f-stop or, or lower your ISO for kind of a cleaner foreground. If you're right. going to intentionally But that's composite. pretty good, though, right? Yeah, it's great. So that's good. That's good. That's good. The, this just is this overcooked. This is just way overcooked. You can see the glows and, and, around the and whole. And the look colors at, are too look vibrant. At the, look at the glows. Zoom in on that. I mean, they're just glowing like crazy. Uh, hold on, I gotta go here to zoom in. Yeah, see how that glow? Yeah, look at the glow. Ooh. Yeah, you shouldn't see that. Yeah, no, no. No, say no to glows. Say no to glows. That should be our campaign yeah. in 2024. That's just, yeah, that's say just. Say no to glows. Say no to glows. So two out of three ain't bad. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, I love the other two. Oh, been there. That's a cool shot. Cat butt. Cat butt. What is this? Is this show your butt this, day? This might be show your butt day. So those cats taken from the front 
would look totally different and a lot better. <laughs> but still. Still be shots of cats on a fence. It's cats on a fence with dead trees. How much were you expecting from this photo? It's cats on a fence with dead trees. And we're looking at their butts. In bad color. Can we have bad color? Can we at least get the color a little better? Yeah. So the cats aren't blue. Yeah, the cats. Look I, at I how blue that photo Blue haired cats. Blue haired cats. But still, dead trees and cat yeah, butt. Yeah. I don't, what were you expecting out of this yeah, one? Just, it looked cute when they were there. And, all right. What were you expecting out of this one? <sighs> this is a, just a tourist snapshot. Anyone standing there, any tourist, anyone that wasn't even considering being or would ever call themselves a photographer, this is the shot they would get. Tourists looking at a big round thing. Yeah. Th now, I see potential in this location if you were to do something like a model with certain things, I could see potential. Yeah. But yeah, at the, the same time, I'm not saying the location's bad. Yeah, but it's, it's just, just a complete meh shot. Yeah, it's all right. This yeah, is the best of the three. That's the best of the three. <clears throat> by far. Yeah, that's the. Uh, but you know what? Hatteras this lighthouse. is weird, but the lighthouse looks dirty. The lighthouse itself yes. looks dirty. And that lighthouse itself probably is a little dirty because that's what happens, right. but you can go and clean that up in post. Yeah, you can clean that you up. You definitely can. I've actually had to clean up that very lighthouse in post with the yep. Milky Way shot. Yep. Did you have any cat butt in your stuff? I, I have not. I, we have cat me butt. Me and cats, we don't, we don't blend. Everything from the background. <laughs> we don't meld. All right. Let's take a look at what we have here. Huh. Uh, snapshots. Yep. You know Snap, what this says? Three snapshots. I was there on I vacation. I was there. I These are I was there. In there, and I had my phone with me. And why are we saying that? There's there's no subject leading line, no compositional rule. There's not there. It's Nothing. just literally like I pointed my camera. That one's crooked. I mean, actually, yeah. the whole river is just leaning over. I went over. to Germany. Yep, that says I went to Germany. It, it's there's no focal point. <sighs> Yeah. Unfortunately, these are they're just straight up this, snapshots. This is probably one of the hardest ones we've had because I don't know yet. Like, you really composition travel with travel photography. There has to be something. And that the post processing is so flat. Yeah. Like it's just like at least if if you gonna yeah, it has no punch if we're to gonna it. take a bad shot, let's at least try to make it kind of semi interesting. Let's do something to the to the. Uh, it looks too yellow, doesn't it? Let's see what auto would look I'm telling like. you that whole thing's leaning, though. The whole thing is leaning. I'm, I'm with you on that. It's leaning. It's driving me nuts. Yeah, let's get it fixed up, up a bit. Thank Somewhere you. Somewhere in there. Yeah. No, I don't feel like the river's just drowning into and the then ocean. Let's get the sky down a little bit. Sky. Let's darken it a bit. It's still not good. Yeah, maybe we could give some different life to that water too. It's just ugh. It's but just it's, ugh. Well, but you know, it, I mean, that's that a, is, uh, I'll tell you what would clarity. help with this too is going at the opportune time yeah. for this. This is shot and again in kind of a middle of the day kind of scenario. And I mean, that's better. It's better. I mean, you've but all you've done not, all you've done is done the post processing that could process the shot better. But it has not improved the quality of the composition. You know, Eric, or, you can put lipstick on, on a pig, pig. Yep. but it's still a pig. Yep, that's <clears> what it is. There it goes. I heard the greatest dirty joke yesterday. I, uh -oh. wish, I wish I could tell it. I'm going to tell it to you when we get off the air. I swear, it's it's filthy, but oh my, I was dying laughing. I called all my friends. I called everybody yesterday. I had everybody in tears. It was that's funny. filthy. Well, I can't wait. No, it's good. But tell what them. else we I'll got? I'll tell the whole crew. It's pretty nasty. Though. What do we got? All so right. these are snapshots. Yeah, these I are think, just... I, mean, I, I honestly think I'm this sorry. is where... Uh, not to say it, but this is the... You, you need you need something like Kelby One. You need something like in your <laughs> life. If you really want to take yeah, this seriously... Yeah, we stuff today. Well, no, it's just the reality. If I know no. that if you showed them how to take those travel photography shots, they would make better travel I'm gonna photography say this shots. Person, I'm just going to say this person is a Kelby One member because I look at the shot. Oh, man, that's... That's Scott Kelby right there. Yeah, that's that that's looks your like, signature. I'm hoping you took my interior photography. Exactly. Class. The only thing I would say here is, 
you, you you straightened the perspective, like right. Yes, I would let it lean. You right? do let it lean. I let it lean because it makes it look more epic. But this is very nice. It's still very I mean, good. You nailed it, right? Yes. So just we'll start there. And there is a an argument that it's strictly an artistic one of whether you should straighten the columns or not. I'll just show you what I would I would let it be. I would have it more like. I'm, I don't know if you can reverse do this, but I'm guessing you can. No, it doesn't really work out. No, I can't. Yeah. Don't even look at it. But anyway, yes, good shot. You nailed it. Yeah, that's great. So just, I'm just going to say you nailed it. Now, hey, what's this next one though? I know the next one's interesting because you can't see the floor. Uh, the, and I want to see the problem. The floor. You got to see <laughs> but, the floor. But you went to a great place. You're shooting down low. I don't know what happened with the floor. I think that they did the perspective correction like they were trying to do, oh, and, and they took the floor out. That. And I'll I think they you're probably right. have, because they probably shot it on a platypod, and they probably yes. have the floor. Yes. Let it lean. Let, let it, it lean. Let it lean back. See right. the floor, Wait, and that might I be a good this? shot. Let me try this. So when we say lean, it would be... This is not good. I'm, I'm going to go find a shot and show you what I mean, because I doing it artificially is not working. Yeah. Well, it's hard because you don't have that data anymore. These are good. I, I'm in love with this photographer, so. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's great. See the floor. Now, this one looks like it needs one other thing. Let me just fix this real quick. And let me see if this will fix it. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's yeah. it. Just hit upright. Go to upright. Yeah, and it just, it was it was kind of like doing that cock eye. Yep. It was like this just side a little was back. Bit. And you, and, and you could, if you wanted to darken this, I probably would. Just go here to linear gradient. You've seen me do this four or five times today. And let's just kind of bring this in down here. Yeah, take that bite off that floor. And I like leaving that little yeah, bit of light, little light there. Ooh, leaking like in that. there, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's it. That's it. But I, I'm telling you, this photographer, I'm loving it. I'm wow. loving what you're doing. But I think Eric has hit on your thing. That here... It, it, you tried to you, you're wanting to straighten it out which i understand like scott yeah. said it is a choice All right, give me a second give me a sec i think actually you probably had more you had, they had more floor in the first shot as well but they yeah. went to straight up yeah. right i'm gonna i'm gonna go but find uh, you scott's one. right if you you can leave it lean back a little bit and i know it's architecturally not flat but it has a look that makes it look more uh, epic or grand when something's tipped back like that Let's see if I can find one. Hold on. Give me a second. I'll do... Uh, that was actually that, that rocket shot. Go. I had a platypod actually way on the ground aiming up at it so I could get that underneath. Oh. And I did not tip it back because I wanted it to seem bigger than it is. Right. Let me go to Chicago here. I got some here. Let me find it. Because that's the one thing when you tip it back like that, like the shots he's going to find. Like when you tip it back, it actually makes it look bigger. Yeah. Here's an example. I did not straighten this one right yes but if i straightened it watch what's going to happen so yeah, most of the floor is going to go yeah a lot of the floor is going to go away i'm gonna have to actually go more yeah because think you'd have to crop out all that stuff right and if you want that let's same get crop. It straight then you have to go to the aspect ratio because it's it squows it up and then when you constrain the crop i lost the you lose the floor you lose the floor and I think that's what it is, is you're losing the floor because of was. that. Yeah. And it's okay to let it lean back. Again, and if yeah, you... Yeah, the leaning if, part makes it look epic. don't want it to lean back, you're going to have to spend a bunch of money on a tilt-shift lens. On a tilt-shift lens. Which, again, though, I just think it looks better and epic when it's kind of leaned back Yeah, like look at that. that. There's some yeah. leaning. Right? It's yeah, leaning, like but that. it has that epicness to it. So, but I know that there's people that that strongly they just don't, don't like it. They don't like it, and I get that. And if it's if that's you, that's okay. All right, we just got to think one more, maybe. And maybe. if that's you, uh, just shoot wider, so you have that ability yeah. to shift later. Wait, that was the last one. Oh, it was. It was it. Oh wait, oh. no, no, wait, wait. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Boom. Boom. Wow, we got through a lot of them today. We got through like 20-something of them. All right. All right. First off, I want to thank everybody for sending in your images. It's not easy to do, and it's not easy to hear. That's number one. Number two is we do have some important news. We are about less than two weeks away from the Worldwide Photo Walk, which is uh, at happening in cities all over the country. Go to WorldwidePhotoWalk.com. And it's coming up on October 7th. I will be leading the walk in where? 
Havana, Cuba. Wow. So if you know someone in Havana that wants to come to my walk, because I don't want to be alone. And, and at the <laughs> top of the screen there, uh, go to the middle there. It says donate, right? Yep. Come up, up there. Higher. Scroll up. This is what it's all about. This is not about us, you know, putting on this photo walk for money or anything. We are raising money for an orphanage in Kenya that we've been supporting for the last I don't know, 15 for years. 15 years. So it's the so, Springs of Hope Orphanage yep. in Nakuru, Kenya, which is one that That's what it's all about. we and the folks on my blog helped build from the, an empty lot on the ground into a wonderful orphanage that helps an awful lot of kids. Yep. So every year we do this photo walk as part of a fundraiser to raise money for And them. also, if you go up to the top there, you have the official t-shirt. Yep. 100% of all the profits from those t-shirts yep. that you buy go to them we don't take anything out of this yep this is nope. all just donations yep. for the kids it's all just to raise money for the kids and so there you go and you can choose all kinds of different styles and colors and all that stuff and uh anyway we hope that you'll do that and all we're asking is if you do decide to walk just give one dollar just one dollar it makes a huge difference now we have people that give five dollars ten dollars Last year, we had one gentleman who I know who he is, gave a thousand dollar donation, which is just mind blowing. Yep. And we've had multiple ones on that. And, and that's where we always appreciate that. All right. So anyway, cool. go join a walk near you and uh, we will see you on October 7th. And maybe I'll see you in Havana. It's not too late to book a trip to Havana. It's easy to get there, uh, especially yeah. from Tampa. <laughs> and if you come to Tampa, you'll probably be on a flight okay. with Scott. I'm on Southwest, so. There you go. Southwest plus right into Havana. Okay. What else? Prizes. Uh, prizes. We, give away we prizes. got prizes. Uh, Who's winning what? Yeah, so we've got uh, Jeannie is winning the Platypod handle, so congratulations. Uh, Tina Idel is, or Idol is one of the books. Uh, that is the How Do I Do It? Yep. How Do I? Yep. How Do I Do That in Photoshop book? Then uh, Kim. Kimberly Zimmer Zimmerman is winning the V flat, and then Medi is winning the on one uh, no noise, and then Elizabeth uh, Whitcomb is winning the Photoshop for digital photographers book, and then Vic K won the Retouch for Me iBundle. bundle. So all you guys got to do is email us over at gridprize at kelby one com, and we'll verify your information and then send out your prize. Please do that by this Friday, if you can. Anything else of importance? No, that was it. We've had a lot. Now, here's a, here's the trick question: Will you be here next week? I will, and I believe you will because you're not going to be in Havana yet. I will not be in Havana yet. I don't leave till Thursday. So we'll both be here next week. But next week we have a special guest coming in next week on the show. Do we? Yes, a very special guest. Ooh, we do have a like special a, guest. Like probably one of the specialist guests we could have. Can we tell him? Uh, it's like one of my heroes, right, of photography. Joe so. McNally will be here, our in-studio guest next yeah, week. So. The living unicorn. <laughs> Magical the unicorn. The magical living. So it's not, it's not fictitious. He's real. Yes, he's real. He doesn't seem like he's real, but he is. <laughs> he's a wonderful guest and just a fascinating guy. Oh, yeah. An incredible photographer. Be here next week. So make sure you catch Joe on the grid next week. Thanks to my crew here. Thanks to Mr. Kuna for coming back from vacation. Yeah. Thanks to Jason for falling asleep in the control <laughs> room over there. Probably he was probably out like a light. Yeah, he's sleeping. I don't blame him. Yeah, now he's uh, switching to the jib. He's like, was, I'm. Uh, he's got to go take a nap. Now he's yeah, it's nappy time. Anyway, thanks for to all of our sponsors. Thanks to you guys for sending in the images. Thanks for watching. Catch you next Wednesday with our special guest Joe McNally. Have a great week. Hello everyone, my name is Mimo Meidani, a long exposure black and white photographer based in beautiful
British Columbia, Canada. Today, I'm going to take you through the journey, seven years journey of my photography experience. I will show you all about compositions, the secret I follow and the experience and the journey I went through. I've got the shortcut for you today. I found a way to practice and learn about compositions. We are going to talk about lines. We are talking about contrast. We're talking about frame within a frame. And we are going to talk about negative space to enhance your composition and enhance overall your photography. So please come and join me on my latest class exclusively at kelby1.com. I am a portrait and wedding photographer based in Valencia, Spain. I do mainly commercial and editorial photography and I retouch up to 100 photos a month. We shoot almost every day for all kinds of clients, such as commercial, beauty and fashion. And we retouch our work more often like every other day. I used to spend over one hour for one photo. If we want professional results, we must remove skin blemishes, do micro dodge and burn, highlight eyes, widen teeth, and even reduce wrinkles in clothes. And this can easily take me up to two hours of work for each photo. So when I saw that there's a plugin for Photoshop that helps you retouch quicker, I was eager to get my hands on it. I read many feedbacks about it, and I found a lot of positive reviews, which made me to consider buying my first plugin. One of the challenges we have at the end of a session or wedding is to achieve an addition in our photograph that look natural. This is where retouch for me has become a game changer. I love the feature that you can pick how much effect it has on your photo and you can adjust it accordingly to your style. I saved a lot of time and always end up having amazing results with my work. I am extremely happy with the quality. Now. I am more efficient and have more time to spare with my family. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base.